Most conferences, symposiums, events go something like this. Everybody gathers, some warm-up notes about where the bathroom is and logistics, and then there's a keynote, and then a breakout, and a breakout, and a breakout, and then maybe lunch, and then maybe a keynote, and then a breakout, and a breakout, and a breakout. And that looks a lot like this to me. This video is to explore what if we create something new. In fact, I'm gonna invite you into a process where I build and design my dream conference in under 10 minutes. I'm gonna walk you through five ingredients that I would inject into any conference or event. And the moment you're done with watching this video, you can steal them and apply them into your own event summit symposium. First one is this idea of an unofficial start, which is a phrase I picked up from Mark Collard in Australia. And it's a concept that uh, before your event begins, it's already begun. So when people go to register, when you're sending them emails out beforehand, when you're crafting the copy to say, why should somebody show up to this? Now, having worked with many, 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 many conference and event organizers, I know that people might come to a conference once for the content, but they come back over and over and over again for all the connections that happen in between the conference. And so when I look at an agenda, I wonder, in what ways are we helping people connect? And so beforehand, one from a marketing and advertising perspective, if you want people to show up and come back, the focus on all the connections that happen in between the content should be at the top of your communication marketing list because it's the reason most people actually go to conferences. The concept of the unofficial start is typically we, we reward people for being late. So even thinking about on the days of your event, are things starting on time? Are you starting with something that sparks immediate and purposeful engagement right from the very outset? Even before the days of the event though, bonus points if you can get creative and actually help people connect via communication, social media, things that you're sending out. And so what would it look like if you posted a question like, hey, all fill in your niche that you're gathering. What are you curious about right now? And you send a link out to that social post, inviting people to respond and see what other people have shared there, right? Starting to make connections before people even arrive. Second ingredient is the context hook. It is so, so important and it is so often missed. Priya Parker, the author of the book, Art of Gathering, um, is big on the idea of meeting for purpose, not for time. And I love that concept. And the way to apply it is with this idea that I would call a context hook. And the concept is that everybody coming into your event is in a different context. They've had a different morning than you have. They had a different fight with their kid. The past couple months, they may have been traveling down the path to burnout, or they might be feeling really good, right? Everybody's coming in from some different context. And so I believe very early on in the first five minutes of any conference or event, you must do or say something that pulls everybody into the same context. I'll give you an example. Recently, I walked onto stage to uh, give the opening keynote at this 3,000 person conference to a bunch of owners of credit unions all around the country. It was a group of smart people whose time is very precious. So when I walked out on stage, the first thing that I did was invite their contribution. I asked, how many of you have met somebody at this conference already? Almost every hand in the room went up. And then my next question was, and when you met that person, and you put out your hand to say hello, what questions did you typically ask? Or do you see the context hook, no matter what kind of morning you've had, you've got to be engaged. You're present with me in that moment answering those questions. And so everything else starts to disappear and you really allow your group to arrive. Now a context hook is anything you do or say to bring people together. So the say part, at the very beginning of your conference, if I were to ask you, what's the purpose of your event? Could you share that with me in a sentence? A really punchy, compelling, memorable sentence. It could be related to the theme. It could be related to some of the keynotes and some of the content you're putting together, but it must include a currency that people care about. For example, over the next three days, all the content that we've put together for you is designed to help save you time when you go back and make your jobs easier, not harder. Some sentence like that that gets people really clear on why all this is happening right now. Number three is my absolute favorite, uh, connection before content. Peter Block would say it's this idea that uh, without relatedness, no real work can occur. So when you are showing up to a conference, you get off your plane or you, your car, you even click your link if it's a remote conference, 
and you're showing up like this. Is there something happening in the first hour, hour and a half of your event that's turning all of these little me bubbles that are walking around an event center into one community? Because that's the goal of a conference is bring like people together so that they can speak the same language with each other, make connections and solve problems because this person's facing the same issue as this person, etc. So fundamentally, is there something happening to make that shift? Now remember, we're trying to build my dream conference in under 10 minutes. And so if you want a handful of concrete examples of how to do that connection before content, um, check out the links below, other resources on the channel. One of my favorite exercises is Question Swap, which you can find on my website. Fourth ingredient is the content with a twist. Content designed for contribution, not consumption. Most content, and this is, this is the hardest part. If you're in the role of organizing any sort of event, and you're coordinating other breakout presenters or other keynotes to come in, this is one of the hardest things is there's an element of coaching, but it's also a framing of saying, hey, we are only accepting content applications or we're only slotting people in if they're willing to commit to design their content for contribution, not just consumption. Here's why that's so important. When you design a conference, that is built purely for consumption, you are competing with YouTube and Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime and any other service that has many, many, many six-figure paid engineers whose only job is to make sure that your attention stays on that platform for longer. And so competing in the land of consumption is a really bad idea because you don't want people leaving a keynote and thinking, wow, I wish I would have just watched that on two times speed from my house. You want people leaving thinking, oh my gosh, this experience was irreplaceable. I can't believe that I just met these people, had these conversations and got this idea. That could have never happened if I was sitting at home. Ingredient number five, and then I've got a couple cool bonus visuals and pictures to share with you. Ingredient number five is closing. Uh, the primacy recency effect in psychology is this idea that a whole bunch of research has shown that we tend to remember what happens first and last most. So oftentimes, a lot of effort goes into what happens at the beginning of an event, but thinking about that closing, you wanna end at an energy level and an insight level that you want people to remember your conference by. And taking some wisdom from the last ingredient, content designed for contribution, I would say uh, most events end with something that's consumption focused. It's like the final statement, the word from the CEO, the fill in the blank, this like last words going into somebody's ears. What I would challenge you or invite you to think about is what could you do in the last five to 10 minutes of an event and invite your audience to actually connect. One of the ways I love to end an event, especially if a group's been together for two or three days is as you leave this room, instead of ending with applause like we typically would at an event like this and maybe thanking some sponsors, would love for you to thank each other. Pair up with at least two people that you connected with this week and just go up to them, look them in the eye and offer some affirmation or appreciation or gratitude for who they are on the planet. And that is your ticket out of here. That will be the close of this event. Thank you so much for coming. Ready, set, find some people. Right? And that is like, really flips the idea on its head of like, you need to end with some momentous hurrah or goodbye. As promised, a couple bonus uh, nuggets. Just check out a couple pictures here. And depending on the budget of your conference, there's some really cool stuff you can do to design space. So we'll do a, a screen share of a, a page on our website of this art of connection mural, collaborative mural that we did um, at one point where people color in sections of the wall. Imagine if you had uh, the we Connect cards, the questions that I've been holding up, um, printed out big around the space with a rope around in the open space so that anybody who walked into that space was in a discussion about this question, right? So using space, um, there's some really cool uh, conference pods that you can get to design conferences for little uh, more intimate spaces. The more budget-friendly version of that would be creating connection corners around. They just have comfy chairs and are mentioned and they become a part of how you actually direct people, right? If you need to just a, like a low-key, deep conversation rather than a high-energy, conference-level, manic conversation, feel free to find one of these connection corners, etc. I even saw at some point, and admittedly I haven't done this or rented this or seen this, um, but there's a giant conference seesaw. You get two people on it, you put it in the main hallway and people could seesaw back and forth. And so just inviting you, if you're gonna be building your dream conference, create an experience that pushes the envelope. And if you want help doing that, it is what I do for a living. And there's a link below to my connected conference offering, which is one of the main ways that I work with 
leaders, educators, and events throughout the year. I'm Chad Littlefield. Have an awesome day.